Yeah, yeah. Terry. Nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you. Hello there. Yeah. On March the 14th, 2007, just here in the River Mouth, Terry Hesse caught a nine and a half foot long female bull shark, estimated to weigh over 500 pounds. This all looks like pretty serious stuff. Yep, well, three out rods and reels. We using one of these, right. nice Tiago 80s. Completely so, yeah. blown away with the idea of using, you know, needing to use that in a yeah. river. These guys are serious, I'm impressed. They're fishing in this busy working port on the frontier between sea and fresh water. I mean, one thing I'm noticing already is attention to detail. They've got a comprehensive plan to outwit the super sensory capacity of this shark. Bull sharks, like all sharks, have tiny pinholes on their snout called the ampullae of Lorenzini, used for detecting electrical fields. They're so sensitive that they can detect the electrical impulses of a fish's heartbeat. Sharks with wider heads, like the bull shark, have more of these pinholes, and therefore they can lock onto prey more accurately. Another one there? To avoid giving off any electrical signals to the shark, Terry masks all but the metal hook point in plastic and cable ties this to the eel. Beautiful. Next, Terry's making sure he capitalises on the shark's smell sense by using fresh bait. Two thirds of this shark's brain is devoted to sniffing out prey. And by fishing at night, we're choosing the most likely time for sharks to go hunting. It's in the dark when the super sensory bull shark has the edge over fish that rely more on vision. Terry begins the journey across the river mouth to place the baits. Bull sharks have been reported to ram kayaks, taking the paddle splash and rudder movements for the thrashing of a fish in distress. Terry's okay, but in getting these baits set in the dark, I've injured my index finger. It's going to make things difficult. I'm just hoping that this and the disturbance from the busy port doesn't damage my chances. Pick it up, pick it up. At 2.30 a.m. You fish on. With the tide high, the line begins to run. In the heart. No, off. It's all right. Yep. Shuffling down. At the moment, it just feels like there's a boat on the end. There's just a dead weight. I'm just changing the ratio there. Yeah. Yeah, that's pulling, that's pulling, that's pulling. It is coming my way. And with nearly 200 yards of line taken in, whatever it is, reaches the shore. Holy What is it? That is huge. <laughs> Like something from 20,000 leagues under the sea, it certainly isn't a shark. But what on earth is it? It's not a shark, but it is an exceptional fish. It's just remarkable. That is something, isn't it? Oh, I've never seen anything like this in my life before. It's what they call a Queensland groper. This is a monster. I mean, it's not the monster I was after, but this is a monster. Looking at it. This is made in three inches. What about the girth? Yeah. Two foot one. Its girth is four foot three inches. Four foot three inches. This is a protected marine fish, normally found on reefs, but they're known to come into river mouths like this on rare occasions. Look at that. This fish, even Terry and Ben, haven't seen anything like this anywhere like this size, you know, so it's just an amazing catch, and particularly from a river. Just, a, you know, this thing really is a river monster. Groupers have an extraordinary trick. This 250 pound male actually started life as a female. When there are too few males in a spawning group, a female will switch sex to keep breeding numbers up. Ooh. This one's none too happy to see me. In an instant, he disappears. 